Hi guys, this is Vishal from Draco. So in this video, we will understand how to secure your data using cryptographic keys, right? So we will use Amazon KMS service, which is a service to generate and uh, store keys for data encryption and decryption. So a lot of uh, compliant uh, like driven application like healthcare, finance or fintech domain, they need data to be stored in a encrypted way right so let's say there is some pi data personal identification data or maybe some sensitive data such as transaction bank account details bank number email id phone number so all these things they prefer to be stored in an encrypted way so that if someone get access to the database they should not be able to see what those actually values are right or what the data is so aws kms is one of the most reliable service to generate cryptographic keys and to encrypt and decrypt data using those keys where we only have the data keys remains in your aws account and then we just call the keys to encrypt the data we make api call to decrypt the data but at the end of the day the data which is stored at trap code is always encrypted which is completely safe and secure irrespective of whether the data uh, the database is getting hosted at our end or it is getting hosted at your end so in this video we'll see how to secure your data using aws kms created a dummy application which has uh, a collection called employee which has fields like name, employment number, description, joining date, and SSN. Okay. Now let's say I want, maybe I'll add some field here and I want the data to be secured. So let's say we are storing the uh, passport number of this person and we, we don't want to store passport as a uh, normal text, right? So, but if I go and add passport number here, so it is going to be text, right? So now let's go and enable encryption. So to do that, what we'll do, we'll go to the settings and we'll say data encryption, right? So here you enable this encryption. So there are several algorithms which we support, several services which we support like base64, KMS, and we are adding uh, more services. So let's say I want to use AWS KMS encryption, right? So we will need uh, access key, secret key, and in which region this is there, and then it will give us a, a encrypted key which we will keep at our end to basically encrypt and decrypt the data right so now let's go to aws account and get these details so i have an aws account i'll uh, you can go and search for kms which is key management service and then just click it okay so it will open a dashboard so now let's go and create a new key so i'll keep all these settings as default so we need symmetric key encrypt and decrypt KMS single sign, single region, okay. And I'll click next. So some name, it is asking me some name for the key. So let's say KMS demo. Description is optional, so I'll just leave tag optional, I'll leave, okay. So it has generated a key for me. Now I can assign a user that which user can have access to the key. And for those users, we can basically uh, keep the security credential which we'll see how we generate in uh, AWS as of now I've not created in user so I'll leave this blank so there are two ways to create IAM user which has access to KMS policies is either once you create a policy for KMS and assign it to a user IAM user of AWS or you can basically assign the user from here itself right so that that user has access to this particular KMS key okay so I'll just leave it for now I'll just complete it. So now I have created one key, which is KMS demo. You know this one, this is a old key, which is getting deleted. So KMS demo. Now let's go and create a person who have access to the policies, which has access to KMS service. So I'll go to here, go to my security credentials and create an user. Okay. Before creating a user, let's create policies for KMS. So I'll say create policy. I'll choose a service. So I want uh, KMS. I'll choose KMS. Actions for now, let's choose all. We want uh, all read list, tagging, everything. Resources, I'll choose all resources. Again, these you can choose on the basis of what setting you want. Okay. And we don't need MFA or source IP. IP address we are not restricting because once you go live to production, you can also restrict that from which IP you want this key to work. But for now, I'll just leave it open. 
so it work across all the ip and then review so i'll give the name to this policy let's say kms policy it has access to all kms uh, resources and that's all okay so now i have created a policy and i will assign this policy to a user and for that particular user we will use the secret key uh, this way to access id uh, and secret okay so kms policy is here now let's go and add a an user so i'll say add user username let's say kms user that's all i don't need uh, aws console access so i'll just leave it as it is now here we will attach the policy which we have created to this particular user so i'll just look for the policies which we created the kms policy this is something which we just created and then i'll assign to the user so now this user has access to kms module on aws right i'll say create user so it is creating the user so the user got created now let's go and go to the security credentials and generate access key so these are the keys which we'll be needing to put here access key and secret key secret access key so i'll say create access key so since we are running on a separate server or separate application so i'll choose third party service and i'll just click this terms and condition and click next i'll just skip this this is optional create key so it has actually created a key for me so i can copy paste these values okay access key and secret access key region will come back we'll see in which region we have created the key okay or you can also you should also download these credentials because you will not get this data again and again okay now done so this is fine so i have created an user which has access to kms now let's go to my kms so that we see in which region we have created uh, this kms keys so we have created in north virginia so i'll come here and select north virginia that's all now it is asking me to generate the actual key using this user okay so we need to put kms arn right so i go back to my keys i'll go to the key which we created and copy this arn right and paste it here arn is copied i'll ask him to make and call and get the actual key to encrypt and decrypt the data so this is the key what do you see this is the key which is now coming this is encrypted encryption key so the key itself is encrypted actually an algorithm so by default it's aes 256 so the data will get encrypted using aes 256 algorithm and i'll click update so this basically does the complete setup where you have connected your trap code project to aws kms to encrypt and decrypt the data now let's go back to the collection and create some data which will be encrypted and decrypted using these keys so i'll go to my employee collection now let's add in field so now you see we are getting this option encrypted so this says that whenever the data will get stored this particular field will be encrypted using aws kms encryption key now i'll say it passport number okay i'll say encrypted and then save so a passport number is encrypted let's make ssn also encrypted okay so update okay so we support encryption on couple of field types like uh, text is encrypted number is not date is not large text is not phone number is also encrypted because it's a personal data email can also be encrypted okay and yeah we'll add on the basis of what all data is needed so now let's go to employee data as of now no employee let's go and just create one record so let's say employee one some employment number description dsc joining date this ssn number right so let's say ssn one okay and passport number ps one two three four five so let's say all this data is sensitive we don't want to store it as a plain text so how this will work so i'll click save 
So now the data is stored in database, right? But if you see SSN number is some random text, right? Passport number is also some random text. Is an end user or is a normal user? I am not able to see what this means, right? It's just encrypted data. If I go and try to see what is stored in database, again, encrypted, I don't know what it is, right? So all the data is now encrypted using KMS. If since we are on a builder, we can actually see the actual data. Okay, so if I want to see what it is, so I can just click decrypt item. It will bring the actual values. It will not bring it as, it has just decrypted it here itself. In the database, it's still encrypted, right? So I can see the data which is decrypted. Now, if I go and add it, while editing, I will actually see the uh, actual values, right? Because otherwise I will not even know what was the actual values, right? So when we are showing the data for creation and adding, we are basically decrypting it on the UI. But as soon as it hits the database, it's again gets encrypted. So updated, it's encrypted. Now let's create some data as an end user. So we have created a table which is displaying uh, this data. So let me just reload the table so we have added one field called passport number so let me just add it to the form so that we capture the field okay so this is the passport number which is fine and that's all right so here we'll display ssn here we'll capture passport and we'll see how it gets stored in the database so this is what your end user is seeing right so let's say as an end user we create one more employee employee to some number, some description, SSN, let's say SSSN2, passport number PAS2, some joining date. Okay, so now user is giving this data. We'll click submit. Now the data goes to the database and gets stored. On the UI, you will still see the value which is not encrypted. So you see the regular text values, which is fine so ssn is text okay but if i go to the database and reload this you can see this is the employee which we just created again the ssn and passport number is encrypted right if i go and see here it is encrypted i can locally decrypt it basically i can decrypt it on the ui so i'll just say decrypt ssn passport right but in the database this is encrypted if they update the data, they will see the actual values decrypted, but as soon as the data gets stored, it will again encrypt it, right? So this way, when you are building application where you need data to be secure and data need to be encrypted at rest, this is how it is done in Trap Code. Hope you enjoyed the video. See you again in the next video. Bye-bye.